Good morning. Good morning. To welcome everyone this morning. It's a pleasure to have you with us as we celebrate Peace Sunday. I want to encourage you, if you haven't already picked up your November newsletter, to check that out and read the many announcements and upcoming events happening there. Just going to pick out a couple other items. Our green sheets are for the Christmas numbers, and so if you want to know what you need to put in bring forward for the Christmas cheer, then take a look at that. We are in need, pretty significantly, of scripture readers and Mint for Mission readers. So there's sign-up sheets on the bulletin boards. It really is a huge hassle in the office when we have to call five or six people before we find a scripture reader for Sunday morning. We could make our lives a lot easier by just signing up and choosing the week that is convenient for you. Uh, I want to draw attention to the time change printed in the bulletin there for the November 29th Christmas carol singing. It's 7 o'clock. That is different from what's in the newsletter, so just take note that that is there. You can always come early, but good to be on time. I'm also just going to draw some attention to the Let's Talk About Death and Dying workshops happening here in November at Holy Family Parish. There's more information on the bulletin boards about um, the topic for each of those weeks. They look to be very interesting and valuable for pretty much anyone who's willing to attend. Not in our bulletin, but something that we've been asked to do is, as the church prepares for some upcoming anniversaries and things, and when I say the church, I mean the national church, they're asking and us to sort of pull the congregation on what are some of our top favorite hymns. So if you would shout out to me your favorite hymn. Amazing Grace in the Garden. Hold on. I can only write so fast. I know I said shout them out, but. Guide me. What was the one that Jean said? Jesus come to the lake. Old Rugged Cross. <laughs> Which one's 703? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't have them memorized by number. <laughs> ah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I'm ignoring you back there. In fact, so much so that I wrote, let your anger hold. Way to go. Yes, I've got that one. Thank you. Ah, yeah. In the sweet by and by. Okay, we've got a good selection here. His eye is on the sparrow. Uh, 
I don't think I know that one. I know God of the Sparrow. Okay. Thank you. I will submit those to the appropriate place. As we gather, we remember that we live and work on the historic lands of the Mi'kmaq. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its peoples. As the days grow shorter and the air grows colder, I invite you to stand as you're able and join in singing our introit, Christ Be Our Light. is on the horizon. What do you see? Destruction and violence. Keep watch. Peace is coming. Look and see those filled with Christ's love who are challenging the assumption society makes about who is small or sinful. Spirit, open our eyes, minds, and hearts as we worship this day. Amen. Please be seated. Let us join in saying together our centering prayer. Ever present God, you are the hope that overcomes despair. You are the peace that overcomes anxiety. You are the joy that overcomes discontent. You are the love that overcomes apathy. We thank you and praise your name. You are the way and in faith we will follow your guiding light. Amen. Our hymn is out of our More Voices hymn books, number 148, Hope of Abraham and Sarah.
I invite you to turn to your neighbors and to greet them offering the peace of Christ. We've got Exton, hi, and Larry, hi, and we've got Willow and Tori and Isabel and Marie Catherine, and you're going to have to tell me your names again. Gabrielle. Gabrielle and Dominic. And what's the elf's name? Rainbow Sparkle. Rainbow Sparkle Elf. Well, good to have you guys with us today. I'm going to read for you a book called The Proudest blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Willow, we're good. <laughs> Mama holds out the pink. Mama loves pink. But As Asaya shakes her head, and I know why. Behind the counter, is the brightest blue, the color of the ocean. If you squint your eyes and pretend there's no line between the water and the sky. It's the first day hijab, and Asaya knows it. I know it, we're sisters. The next day, I wait. A new backpack, new light up shoes. I feel special. I feel like twirling. What are they getting ready for? School. For school, that's right. Asaya comes out of the house and I stop. It's the most beautiful first day of school ever. <coughs> I'm walking with a princess, so I pretend I'm one too. But even princesses have to stop to cross the street. Asaya takes my hand in hers. Come on, Feza. We speed walk it. 14 steps, 14 light ups to get across. What's lighting up? Her shoes, that's right. <laughs> Asaya takes me to my line first and hugs me goodbye. I turn to watch her leave and give a little curtsy to the princess going to the sixth grade area. She's easy to see. Her hijab smiles at me the whole way. My first day hijab is going to be blue too. What's that on your sister's head? 
the girl in front of me whispers. A scarf, I whisper back. I don't know why a whisper came out. I try again, louder now. A scarf, hijab. Oh, she whispers. Asaya's hijab isn't a whisper. Asaya's hijab is like the sky on a sunny day, and the sky isn't a whisper. It's always there, special and regular. The first day of wearing hijab is important. Mama had said it means being strong. I turn, but I can't see the blue anymore. I run to the big kid's side, 27 steps to see Asaya. I need to give her another hug. I need to see her smile. Feza, Asaya's eyes wonder why I'm here. Are you excited? I ask. About the first day of hijab? She nods, smiling. I and I feel better. Someone laughs from nearby, a boy pointing at Asaya. Why? Asaya's hijab isn't a laugh. Asaya's hijab is like the ocean waves to the sky. It's always there, strong and friendly. Some people won't understand your hijab, Mama had said. But if you understand who you are, one day they will too. In class, I draw a picture, two princesses in hijab, having a picnic on an island where the ocean meets the sky. The girl who whispered in line says she likes it. She says it's so loud, the teacher comes over to see it. I wonder if Asaya drew a picture too. Recess time is for five cartwheels in a row. I land the last one near the sixth graders, near Asaya and her friends. Near a boy yelling, I'm going to pull that tablecloth off your head. Asaya's hijab isn't a tablecloth. Asaya's hijab is blue, only blue. Asaya turns away and her friends turn away. They race to the middle of the schoolyard, their sho shoes pounding the pavement as they play tag. Mama said, don't carry around the hurtful words that others say, drop them. They are not yours to keep. They belong only to those who said them. It takes me 48 steps to get away from that yelling boy. And after school, I look around. I look for whispers, for shouts and laughs. But I only see Asaya waiting for me, like it's a regular day, and she's smiling strong. We cross the road hand in hand, and I can't wait to get home to show Mama the picture I drew, to show Asaya that I'm wearing the same hijab in it. Because Asaya's hijab is like the ocean and the sky, no line between them, saying hello with a loud wave, saying, I'll always be here, like sisters, like me and Asaya. That's the author of our story. Have you ever seen someone wearing a hijab? Yeah? Yeah. We have. Do you remember? It was a while ago, but many of us may have seen someone wearing a hijab and many of us may not have. Do you know why women wear hijab? Not too sure? Muslim women start to wear it around the age 12, the age of Asaya in the story. It is a symbol of adulthood and of their faith in God. 
Many teenage girls and women who wear hijabs are bullied and harassed because of their head covering. And this is not the way that we should act towards people who look different from us or who have different traditions from us. Did you know that Christian women used to cover their heads in church as a symbol of their faith? Who remembers that? Turn around. Many people remember that. What did, what did the Christian women wear on their heads? Hats, yes, Shawnee's wearing one today. <laughs> Bringing back the tradition. <laughs> and we have another, there's a couple other women who occasionally wear hats to church as well. And they don't feel like they have to take it off because again, it's a sign of respect to God. Sometimes though, when we go other places, we do take off our hats. And that's a sign of showing respect to other people. So we all wear different head coverings for different reasons, and hijab is just like a hat in many ways. Can we pray together? I invite you guys to repeat after me. God of peace, help us to see the bullying around us. May we try to act with love and peace as Jesus taught us. Amen. I invite you guys to head to Sunday School and we'll remain seated as we sing together more voice number 173, put peace into each other's hands. Thank you. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Habakkuk 1 and 2, reading voice, verses 1 to 4 from each. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteousness 
Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them. But the righteous live by their faith. Continuing now with the selection from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. To the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear the word of God from ages past. Thank you. 
Thank you. Our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not. Because he was short in stature, and so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to be the guest of the one who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because you too is a, are a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Hear the stories of God's great love for us. Amen. And let us sing together hymn number 418, Go Forth for God. Thank you.
be seated. Let us pray. God of vision, help us to see the violence that invades our community and seek ways of peace as we wait for you to change human hearts to your ways of love and peace. Amen. In Habakkuk, we are hearing just snippets of both the complaint of the prophet and of God's reply. The prophet is essentially saying to God that violence, suffering, and injustice are all around us, but where is God? One of the problems of this complaint is that God does not often directly intervene in human matters. Instead, we are given guidance and direction to act with more love and compassion, thereby building a better world. At one time or another, for one reason or another, most of us have cried to God, or at least questioned God, about our own struggles or the struggles of the world. The other problem brought to light with Habakkuk's words is that we often need to witness violence and suffering before we are truly motivated to make lasting change. Sadly, it's not hard to become desensitized to the struggles of our world when horrific pictures appear across our TVs and computers with regularity on news broadcasts, movies, and games. In order to protect our mental and emotional well-being, we often brush off those things that we don't see as directly affecting us. However, this can also prevent us from seeing that which is right in front of us, too. Do we see the violence happening in our community? Do we acknowledge things like spousal abuse, the suicides, the drug addiction, the parental neglect, and the bullying that exists in our community? The church is sometimes accused of choosing to focus on hope, forgiveness, love, and other feel-good messages, rather than drawing attention to the dark realities of violence lurking just below the surface of our towns and cities. In fact, the church has a history of covering up violence, like sexual abuse, residential schools, and bullying. I even have had a tendency on the occasion of Peace Sunday to speak about the hope of peace without really acknowledging the problems of violence in our world. Certainly, peace is only necessary because of the fighting and aggression present in our lives. These forms of violence do impact our church and our wider community, and they need to be acknowledged as more than just the punchline of a joke or source of fear. Habakkuk encourages us to fully see and understand these struggles and sufferings so that we can also bear witness to God's presence of peace working through us and others. I'm sure that you've all heard about the many struggles present in our community, but much of it can remain hidden if we don't open our eyes to really seeing it. Let us just for a moment take some silence and a call to mind 
some of the suffering and aggression that you may have seen. Perhaps you're bringing to mind images of domestic violence or drug abuse, of bullying, of issues around low income, unemployment or underemployed, of theft and violence, of kids without food, and the list goes on all of which is very difficult for us to see unless we happen to know someone directly affected or we seek to understand these issues and create change. I've shared a story many times, maybe not from the pulpit though, about my experience last year um, delivering Christmas hampers from this church with Eric. I've delivered Christmas hampers in quite a few different communities, about four, um, for many years, and yet I've never seen the housing conditions that I saw in this community. It was utterly shocking. Whether it was some of these old houses turned into five and six unit complexes that were left in terrible states of disrepair. Or whether it was a family with children living on the edge of this community in a literal shack. Something that would not have been qualified to call a house that added on rooms by attaching trailers, things that would not have kept anyone warm in winter. It was very shocking, and it saddens me deeply to think that there are people living in this community in these conditions. This is just one example of what I've already witnessed and seen with my own eyes in the short time that I've had the privilege of living in Amherst. I imagine you all have your own stories to share. But we need to do that, to share them to speak about what we witness to, to talk about the problems and the situations of violence and suffering present in our community. Otherwise, how do we acknowledge the need for change? And this is exactly what Habakkuk is doing as he cries to God. He is spelling out the problems He's saying these things cannot continue on. They must change. And in the second half of the reading, Habakkuk says to God, I will keep watch and I will wait for you. And God responds, saying, write down my messages so that all may hear in other words, don't make me repeat myself yet again. A time is coming, and it will come in its own time when violence will end. Have faith, be patient, it will come. So the first step seems to be to see and acknowledge the injustices and violence in our communities and in our world. And then the second step, of course, is to seek God's way towards peace. 
a way that sometimes takes a while to reveal itself to us. So we watch and we wait for opportunities to share our experiences so that perspectives can be changed and peace can be sought. As you go from this place this week, as we continue to acknowledge the upcoming Remembrance Day and think about our veterans and other past violences that we have lived through, I invite you to also consider the things that are happening right here in our neighborhoods and in our community. And let us hold them close and dear as well. Thanks be to God this day for being with us as we witness to the struggles, the oppressions, the injustices and violence so that we may be God's hands and feet working for peace in our world. Amen. Giving is a radical act of kindness and a spiritual practice in which we are called to imitate Jesus. Let us join in singing together as the offering is brought forward. Presence of peace, take these gifts and those given through par, which represent our desire for healing and love in our relationships with family, church, and community. May they spread the message of your love and help to build peace throughout our world. Amen. Let us pray. Prince of Peace, we thank you for the various opportunities that you give us, not only to bear witness to the struggles and violence that surrounds us, but also to use that to change perspectives to act and work and lobby for justice and hope. Be with those in our community who are on the front lines of things. Those working with service agencies, with law enforcement, with first responders, who truly are witnessing to the violence and suffering on a daily basis. For whom it might be very difficult to see any sense of hope or any path of peace forward. And we thank them for all that they do and give to our community. We pray also this day 
for those who are struggling for one reason or another. We pray for Lou and Timmy who are in hospital. We pray for those recovering from surgery. For those living with cancer, like Sandy's sister, Carolyn and Heather. For grieving families, especially the family of Nancy McGregor. We pray for those who are doing their best to try and be the best people contributing to our community, but who may have many struggles ahead of them. For those who suffer with addictions, with mental illness, with unemployment or underemployment. Those who live in horrid conditions. Who struggle with hunger, not knowing where their next meal may come from. For those who are homeless. May we, rem may we remember that all are members of our family in Christ. Deserving of knowing the love and compassion of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us bind these prayers with those said in the silence of our hearts and minds as we join in saying together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 681, where cross the crowded ways of life. 681.
May the God who sees and loves you create in you new ways of seeing the world, that we may walk paths of peace and build your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Thank you.